Multicam setups take a lot of time to edit, and I don't want to spend a lot of time editing. Today's video is proudly powered by our partner, Oxide Hosting. Get your products hosted by them with their cheap, reliable services. So what are you waiting for? Check them out in the description below. Hey everyone, Duncan here for Menulux and welcome back to another episode in the JDA series. And today marks the start of a sub-series within the JDA tutorials because we're going to start on our music section. Music comments were requested by a lot of people and since the JDA music series takes a lot of rewriting for JDA 4 and let's be honest, you're only watching this tutorial because you don't want to think about the code. So that's why we're gonna start building a music bot in JDA 4. We're gonna start off with creating a new package in our commands package. This package is, go is going to be the music package and in the music package we're going to create a class called join command as we did with all the other commands in our series this command implements the i command class what you're seeing right here is how we set up commands in this series if you have a different way of creating commands that's totally fine all you really need to follow is the code within this handle method and you can really easily adapt this to vanilla JDA code. The name of this command will be join and the help will be called makes the bot join your voice channel. To start off with this join command we want to firstly obtain the text channel. If you're using JDA you can just call your guild message received event .cat channel. The command context class we use right here is just a wrapper around the guild message received event so that we can access some methods more easily. So let's get our text channel, ctx.get channel, and that returns a text channel, and we're gonna turn that into a variable. Next up, we need to get the bot, which is the self member. So ctx.get self member and let's name that self. And this is what I meant with easier access to some methods. Normally you would need to get the gold from the event and then get the self member. This is just way shorter to type. Next up, we will need to get the voice state of the bot because we need to check if the bot is in a voice channel before joining a voice channel, if that makes sense. So let's write this out, right? Self.get voice state, and let's make that into a variable. And I'm gonna actually gonna rename this to self voice state. This is the voice state of the bot. And the voice state just contains whether the bot's in a channel or not, and what channel it is, and what channel it is connected in. Next up, we need to check if the self voice state is in a voice channel. We do this check because we don't want the bot joining any other voice channel while it's playing music in ours. So if it is, we will just return, return, and we will send a message. So channel dot send message. Don't forget to queue the rest action, and the bot is gonna say, "I'm already in a voice channel." That's an extra space there. And you may notice this warning over here, which says method invocation in voice channel may produce no pointer exception. That is because member.getVoiceState may return null, but it will only be null if the cache flag of voice state is disabled manually. So let's make sure that it is not disabled. As you can see right here, um, we're a bit outdated on JDA. So let's fix that first. There we go. Set disabled cache flags was replaced with disable cache. And from this disable cache method, we want to remove the voice state. If you use create default or create the voice state will be enabled. If you use create light on the JDA builder, your voice state will be disabled and you will need to manually enable it with the enable cache method on the JDA builder. What we also need to do 
is enable the guild voice states gateway intent to make sure that our bot is able to track whether a member is in a voice channel or not. Just to ma double make sure that it's enabled. Enable cache cache flag dot voice state. This is just to make sure that it is not magically disabled somewhere. This enable cache call is redundant normally, but as all but as I always like to say, better safe than sorry. So now that we are sure that the voice state cache is enabled and we receive updates for voice states, we can just tell IntelliJ to shut up. Next up, we want to check if the member running the command is in a voice channel. Because if the member is not in a voice channel, we can't connect to that voice channel. So let's write those checks out ctx.get member this is the member and of course we need to get the voice state for that member so member.get voice state and this is member voice state the check to see if a member is in the voice channel is basically the same as this check but the boolean is inverted as you can see what we're doing here if not member voice state dot invoice channel we're gonna send a message that the member needs to be in the voice channel and return next up we are going to get the audio manager for the gold to get the audio manager we just say ctx dot get gold dot get audio manager and store that in a variable and let's also get the voice channel that the member is in. So, member voice state get channel. This is a voice channel. So let's name it member channel. And what we can do next is, and what we can do is say audio manager dot open audio connection to the member channel. And after that, we also want to send a message. So I'm just gonna put connecting to and then the member channel dot get name. And this over here is a speaker icon and the way you obtain this Unicode notation is very easy. You just go over to You just go over to Discord, in this case the Manudocs Discord, we will go to the bot commands channel and we just type db explanation mark emote and in this case I want the loud sound emoji and as you can see we have this thing from within brackets and that is the thing you need to copy down in your code. What you also will need to do and I'm gonna leave this up to you to implement yourself is do a permission check here to see if your bot has permission to join the voice channel. For this you can use the has permission method on the self member and you will need to check for the voice connect permission in the member channel. If you cannot figure out how to do that, a lot of people in the menu docs discord will be able to help you with that, but it should be fairly simple for you to figure that one out. So all that's left to do now is add the command to our command manager and boot the bot. So now that the bot is booted, we can just join a voice channel and we can say explanation mark, explanation mark, join. And as you can see, it says over here connecting to voice. If we were to move the bot to another voice channel, for example, and run a join command, it says, I'm already in a voice channel. And if we are not connected to a voice channel yet, we will say, you need to be in a voice channel for this command to work. And of course, here's what happens if your bot does not have permission to join the voice channel. You can, see, you can see this nice stack trace in your console. So again, to prevent that, make sure you implement a check 
in your code. But that is it for the first episode in this music sub-series. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe to Menudox if you haven't already, and I see you guys in two weeks with another episode. Goodbye.